Is this the Lost Premium 4K webcam? Well, today I'm gonna to take a look at the Zoom Q2N Handy Video Recorder, as they call it, button webcam mode. So this is a 4K 30 frames per second camera with premium microphone that really can be powered by two AA batteries that also functions as a 1080p webcam powered via optional USB. So let's go. Now, if you don't know Zoom, they're primarily focused on all things audio with microphones, processors, mixers, and more. And they also do a few cameras, the Q series, and this is the Q2N. It's the smallest in their lineup. And I've owned a few of their handheld recorders over the years, and they make really great products. But what about this particular camera? Well, for starters, I'm using it right now to record the audio for this entire video. So let me quickly go through its features, then I'll record with it, uh, with some of its various options and the field of view, the scenes or modes as they call it, and also the different sound modes that are capable with this camera. And you know, it can be used standalone and store video and audio files to a micro SD card. And note that the 4K modes, 4K30, 4K25, 4K24, are only available when you're recording to media. Webcam functions though are limited to 1080p, there's also an option for 720p. Now video is recorded to SD media and that's done in an MOV format. So it's very nice for video editing software. And it's got five different field of view settings starting at 150 degrees all the way down to very tight frames as well. And there are 12 onboard scenes that I'll demonstrate in a moment. And it also has an HDMI out. I think it's a mini or micro HDMI out and there's an analog style audio gain dial on the side of it. There's also three and a half millimeter audio input and separate three and a half millimeter audio output for audio monitoring. Now the microphone also supports low cut or high pass filters as they're known at 80 Hertz and above. And of course it has a standard tripod mount. So there's a lot of nice things that you can use the LCD to monitor on back. You can use it to set everything up. You can also monitor audio levels and make any adjustments necessary. So now you know how it sounds, but let's see what the camera is actually capable of in webcam mode. This is the Zoom Q2N. Now it's got a couple of great features from a webcam perspective that you normally wouldn't see, you know, especially hardware controls on the camera itself. So let me start with the field of view. So the first one is 150 degrees, which you can see right now. You can see some lens distortion kind of on the sides here, all the vertical lines, you know, that aren't like in the center of the frame are a bit curved. So let's try a different one. So when I go in just one level uh, down, now I'm kind of correcting that um, lens distortion a bit and it's using some kind of an algorithm to stretch things out because you can tell my hands look very short, like baby hands as I go in towards the middle, they're, they're normal again, but um, you can see because it's a fisheye lens and it's got that uh, lens kind of correction effect to it, it does that. So let's move in. Everything else is on auto, no audio settings or anything else configured. So let's keep zooming in. So this is the middle setting for the field of view. I'm guessing it's around 70, 75 degrees. You can go in a bit tighter and this is one level in, maybe uh, 50 so, or 60 degrees. And then one level in and you can start to see we're losing some some details, some resolution. It's got the sharpness cranked up pretty high, which I think is why it's got that kind of grainy effect to it um, almost throughout. Uh, but but you can tell, um, you know, it's because it's a 4K sensor and right now I'm shooting at 1080p, it still looks pretty, pretty crispy for a webcam. So let's go back out to this level of zoom for the rest of it. Cause now I wanna go through the different scene settings cause there's about 10 different scene settings. These are nice because you can use them inside of Microsoft Teams or Zoom, and it's basically making it so that you don't have to worry about having something in the path of the camera like software that's gonna take down some CPU, whether you're gaming or on a Teams or on a Zoom call, anything like that is gonna be you know, fairly CPU intensive to take an image and radically tweak it like you can do with these settings. I'm gonna go from the auto, fully auto setting on the camera, which is pretty good. I will go to my preferred setting actually, which is outdoor, because I think I like the additional kind of dynamic range. It seems to provide better shadowing. Um, my lights are at about 5,000 Kelvin. 
so it matches, you know, from a skin tones and, you know, image perspective, it's looking pretty good. So the next one, this is outdoor. So the next one's called Sunset. I don't love it. It's very um, orangey, but in the right circumstances, it might work. This one's Night, which is probably my second favorite setting. Very close to outdoor, you know, from a color temp perspective, looks good. Then we get into these kind of more musician uh, modes or scenes that you can do with a camera that, you know, have, have their quality to them in the right setting, but let me show you what you can do here. So there's one that's called Concert Light. So this is, you know, you can tell the contrast has gone down a bit. It seems like it's smoothed out quite a bit. Um, some of the lines, some of the details, it's got a kind of a misty feel to it, which I think with the right kind of music and the right environment and ambience could really make sense. Um, then we go to Jazz Club, cue some jazz music. Uh, this is a bit warmer uh, than the other modes. I don't love it, but you know, again, in the right with the right atmosphere and the right lighting, the right music, it might um, might be the right look for you. Then you've got what's called uh, Dance Club, cue some EDM or dubstep music. Um, this will give you more of that misty kind of co color to it, but it's very washed out in my opinion. So I'm not a huge fan of this one either. I do like this one though, this is monochrome. If you want to stand out on your Teams or Zoom calls or your streams and don't want to do that processing uh, through the saturation dial and on various camera controls, this will let you quickly go to a black and white view, which is pretty dramatic looking. Then you've got sepia, not a fan of this, you know. Uh, it's not usually seen as fun because back in the 1860s or whatever, 1890s, when people used this kind of camera, tone and technology, they had to hold their position for about 30 seconds, so everybody looks like they're frowning typically, but you can have a bit more fun with it with sepia, and you will be the only one probably on any of your Teams or Zoom calls doing sepia, so at least it'll be unique, but I don't love this look. And then you got something called film, which I think is trying to kind of emulate, you know, Super 8 or those kind of film technologies where it's, you know, very oversaturated, uh, doesn't look that great to me, it's also very kind of misty and low amount of detail. Then you got something called X process. I love the X is in there because it reminds me of like, you know, the knots or the early uh, 2010s when X games and all those things were very popular and a lot of people shot with this kind of filter on and you can still see it in a lot of webcam or I should say phone, uh, camera phone uh, settings for various filters as you post, you know, your, what you're eating for dinner to Instagram or those kind of things. Um, it's it's kind of cool this one, but you know, I'm not a huge fan of this either. It's there though So you can again set this and be on your team's calls or whatever if you want to look a bit different and stand out from the crowd This X process will do that and it actually looks pretty cool in a way Now this flat setting it looks like an expensive cameras raw mode Which is kind of counterintuitive because normally you'd expect contrast and, and nice image But maybe there's a lot more detail here if you applied a lot to it or something but to me it looks very washed out, so this is called flat. So now I'll go to auto, which again is, is pretty accurate, and then my favorite one, which is called which is called outdoor. This is my favorite one called outdoor. So now let me show you the different mic modes. So right now I'm in microphone um, auto gain setting to off, and these might start to clip as I change them to different settings. So I'm gonna go click in one, so this is in what's called concert mode right now, just if you can hear the audio difference between it and the next one. This should be in what's called solo mode. I can't see what's on the back of the camera right now, so I'm saying it should be. This is solo mode, so let's hear what the microphone sounds in solo mode. Then we have what's called meeting mode. Let's see what the microphone sounds like in meeting mode. So those are kind of all the different modes that you can do. I'm going to take it back to the mode of off. So it's just the raw kind of un, uh, unfiltered or unprocessed microphone sound. There is a gain knob here on the left side if you're facing it that you can do for auto gain adjustment, or I should say gain adjustment. Um, and there's also another button that you can press that allows you to do uh, delay of number of frames for audio because if you're not doing time alignment in post, what happens is the audio processes a lot faster. So usually the, the video will lag behind the audio by a few frames and you can correct that uh, and get it to exactly where you want it and it has the number of frames that you can set for that. So 
you don't have to do that work in post-production. It's kind of pre-aligned for you before you put on a timeline. So those are just some of the highlights for the primary settings that the camera can do. Now I didn't show the high pass filters or frame delay settings, but you should have a pretty good idea of the core capabilities. And I did try it using SD media to make sure that 4K and all those modes work. Of course they do. It doesn't really fix any of the detail or the graininess of the image. You know, I'd say the video in most of the usable scene modes looks a bit grainy. That's true also when you record to 4K on SD media. It's a bit over sharpened, I would say. I've cranked my lights up as high as possible, even added lights to give it the best possible chance I could. But I would imagine that environments where music is played, where this uh, camera is probably uh, designed to, to work mostly, the lighting's gonna be insufficient to avoid the graininess that, that we saw in the video. Now the audio really is the highlight of this camera, as you might expect, and it certainly competes with microphones that I've tried, like the Blue Yeti, for example, as a very high quality condenser microphone right out of the box. And that's how I would imagine the team at Zoom actually target this device. So audio is important, and for things like Zoom and team calls at about 18 inches away and with decent lighting, it's a great camera. As mentioned, you know, if you really want to play with things like filters and the uh, camera on board without it robbing things like your CPU from your PC or Mac, this is a great solution. So if you want to come through in black and white or sepia or using the X process mode, you can do that without it robbing any of the performance from your PC. So would I recommend it? I would say yes, in the right circumstances. If you're a streamer looking for a great all-in-one microphone slash camera combo and either don't intend to go full frame with your video or you know you want to bring a lot of lighting to your setup, it'll perform pretty well. Now it retails for about $250 and I have a link to that in the description. You know there are a lot less expensive solutions out there that you can do you know using the logitech stack or even some of the other cameras that i've reviewed on this channel that you can check out um, but you know this can work in the right circumstances and i would guess that you know this is a this is a great portable microphone for or end camera for musicians that also bear in mind that video in low light situations isn't going to be a strong suit of this particular device so hopefully this was a useful review for you. Check out all of my other webcam reviews at the link on the screen, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.